Hello, friends and adventurers, zombies and ghouls, and happy spooky season to you all. I've got a little surprise today. Instead of our usual fare, I'd like to bring one of the OG Macintosh favorites back from the dead. At least for a little while. With the help of internetarchive.org, I present to you... Dark Castle. Created in 1986 by Jonathan Gay and Mark Stephen Pierce, Dark Castle brought the arcade-style action platformer genre to the Macintosh. It is one of the oldest computer games that I've had the pleasure of playing. Fortunately for us, the Internet Archive has uploaded and is hosting this so we can play in-browser, without needing an original Macintosh or emulation software. Now, you can see that the mouse cursor is lagging a bit here. I have read some comments suggesting that the game is really laggy on Windows machines. I found that it actually plays pretty well on Google Chrome on my Mac Mini. So, without further ado, let's begin. Okay, I've just full screened this so that it will show up better on video. Grandpa, what huge pixels you have. So this fella here is Prince Duncan. We are controlling him and we have four doors to choose from. One and two are mystery doors, three leads directly to the Black Knight, and four leads to the shield. Going after the Black Knight as we are now, is basically suicide. Let's go for the shield. And there are some areas where it's good to take a moment, assess the situation. Some areas where it's better to keep moving, this is one of those keep moving areas. Oh. because when I spend too much time thinking, I get hit by a barrel. Of course, sometimes one has to... pause for a moment to dodge the mutants or other enemies. This is going a little worse than it usually does. There we go. So as a kid, I got a lot of practice with the introductory screen of each area. And also a lot of practice running into walls and making Duncan do the dizzy dance. I'm less familiar with the later screens. And don't get toasted by the dragon. Grab the elixirs for no reason whatsoever. Ah, oh, got birded. Now we gotta watch out for random gaps in the floor because those will lead us to the dungeon. I'm sure we'll see the dungeon eventually anyway. And I will admit, even though I've got a fair bit of practice, the controls in this game are pretty fiddly even when you're familiar with them. Duck. Duck? No, vulture. Well, I've made it onto the scoreboard anyway. That was a pretty crap beginning. Let's try again. I'd really like to finish at least one zone today. Oh, you silly mutants. Long jumping is good for covering a lot of space. 
and occasionally outrunning things. But if you time it badly, you can fall into the dungeon. This is another area that I am very, very familiar with from my childhood. Okay, there's one more bat over here that we should take care of before it comes to bite us. And then we have to get past this whip guy to get one of the keys to get out of the dungeon. Just scooch on over. Oh, the prisoners are shaking their heads. What's wrong with this key? Aw, oh, we got smooshed by a weight Looney Tune style. Got one. Got two. Okay, and if you heard the uh sound, this guy is immune to having rocks thrown at him. And yes, Prince Duncan has gone to the castle to challenge the Black Knight, armed only with his bag of trusty rocks. And even when we get a mace, we drop it as soon as we're done with it. Take out the mouse and the guard, jump the gap, hit the guard again when he wakes up. Yeah, the guards are basically robots or otherwise mechanical men. I think they stay down longer when you get the fireball upgrade for your rocks. Bats on the ceiling. The guards are armed with crossbows that have a bit of an arc to them. Sometimes it is good to jump down instead of running straight forward and tripping over the ledge. These ropes are a little bit tricky on the timing. There we go. First try. Duncan, you're supposed to grab the rope. Okay. Try this one more time. Don't get bit by a rat. There we go. And I need to climb farther down the rope before I can safely jump off. I swear, this is the trickiest part of getting out of trouble. Do I have to be standing in the exact right spot to jump and grab the rope? Out of elixirs, so I really need to not get bitten by any rats or bats. And I'm dead. I was really hoping to be able to show off leaving the dungeon. Let's try one more time. Oh, or I could hit quit by mistake and crash the emulator. Well then. Now I could fix the issue by reloading the page and starting over again, but why not use this as an opportunity to show off even more Dark Castle? Did you know they made a sequel called Beyond Dark Castle? It's not available on archive.org, but Macintosh Garden does have it for download. It'll even run on Sheepshaver. 
Kinda. It's a little hard to notice in the beginning screens, but it runs perfectly well, except there's no sound. So here we find a new antechamber in the Dark Castle. Beyond Dark Castle is interesting in that it has a health bar instead of the live system. You may also notice that we have a few more pickups available. We can carry multiple keys, we can pick up bombs, and gas. And Duncan is still an absolute klutz. But yes, not having the sound... It's a little less fun, and if not in some of the main introductory screens here, uh, it can and will definitely interfere with gameplay when I can't use audio cues to tell when certain enemies are coming. Ah, another neat feature of Beyond Dark Castle, you have the ability to save and restore games. Also, there are lasers. And now I am dead. Oh, aha! We do, in fact, have spare lives. That's nice. But enough of this. Dark Castle also got a whole lot of ports. Most people know the console ports, which ended up being really terrible. But there is another one that came out for later generations of Macintosh in the mid-90s, Dark Castle Color, that is actually pretty decent. So the opening graphics are not quite as impressive, but for the most part it's a very faithful adaptation. You've got the beginner, intermediate, and advanced difficulty levels, and also novice, which might be good for someone like me who has some practice but is still kind of bad at the game. The information screens have been a little bit simplified. Standard options. So I'm going to select novice difficulty. Loads up pretty quickly. One difference that is immediately noticeable is the dungeon and fireball areas are labeled. No more random chance here. I'm still going to go get the shield first because it really comes in handy when getting the fireball. Also, novice difficulty. Strips a lot of difficulty out of the game by sending you directly to the final screen in each section. Okay, so... Seems like it's running a little bit slowly right now. Yeah, and I have to try and remember which platforms remained lit up here. Fortunately, this jump is a short enough drop that it doesn't kill me. And we've only got the one thundercloud here this time. Run quickly. And grab shield. Now we have to wait for the thunder to come back. Because, like Frankenstein and his monster, we use lightning for power! Now we're zapped back to the main chamber with the shield. Let's go get that fireball. So, this enemy, the magic broom, is kind of a pain. When you hit it, it splits. Lovely. So 
So we can't take it out with our rock. There we go. Best thing to do with that one is activate the shield while it moves past you. Um, Duncan, you were supposed to land on the platform. There we go. Not that I expect to need many rocks here. Well, that was easy. And that may very well be a world record for how fast I've gotten the shield and the fireball. And yes, I've deliberately gone into the dungeon. Shouldn't there be... Okay, there's one guard. Man, novice difficulty really does make things easier on you. Uh, up the stairs. Need to fireball the bat. But again, there's only one bat instead of three. Oh crap, there's a guard. Okay, so at least in this version of the game, when guards are fireballed, they eventually disappear. Only to be replaced by the magic doors. Little more gory this time. I don't remember. Okay, I didn't remember how much time I had before the door opened with a new guard, and it turned out it wasn't much. Okay, let's see what the Black Knight has in store. Give my lack of commentary here. I have pretty much never. D oh crap, that's a gargoyle. Where's it coming from? There we go. And that is why I desperately want sound cues when. Okay, the good news is I'm not dead. The bad news is I'm in the dungeon. Again. Welcome to the Dark Castle experience, everyone! But we're on Novice, so it's not like I lost that much progress. Okay, try this again. But yes, that shrieking gargoyle is why I absolutely 
want to have sound cues in Dark Castle games so I can hear when it's coming and not get surprised and dragged off to my doom. So we've got a set of five levers to pull, one for each of the pillars under the Black Knight's throne. Oh, I got nailed by a beer mug. Editing Sarah here, I do apologize for all the mouse squeaks. If I ever do another episode on Dark Castle, I will try and get a better sound balance. Filtering out the annoying background sounds is all part of the classic gaming experience, right? Uh, Duncan, I... What are you doing? Okay, when I'm on this side of the screen, the gargoyle should be coming from the other side. And easily dispatched. Okay, maybe I need to go over the top to actually get on the other side here. Whew, good save. Oh no. And flip this switch, and now we've got a proper platform in the middle. No, 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 no. Ah! I will figure this out. I will figure this out. Tried to hit the shield, but I was too late. There we go. Have to jump from just the right spot to get in the middle. Not that it actually helps me here. But it does make traversing a little easier.
Okay. Just dizzy, not dead. I'm still good, I'm still good. to take out some of the rats because it would just be embarrassing to come this far and uh, die to one of them. Whew, that was a very near miss. And... We got him! Oh no! Congratulations, you have defeated the Black Knight. Now that you have mastered the controls, let's see what you're really made of. Send him to the pit! <laughs> and we are right back in the dungeons. So, yes, th that ending happens basically any time you defeat the Black Knight in original Dark Castle. The challenge, even on advanced difficulty, is to see just how high of a score you can get. Now, in Beyond Dark Castle, I believe that you get the same gargoyle drags you off to the dungeon, start the game over, ending for everything except advanced difficulty. In that one, beating the game on advanced difficulty gets you the true ending, which I will not spoil here, but you can find footage of it on YouTube. Speaking of true endings, there was another sequel released about 20 years later, Return to Dark Castle. This one includes all of the original levels of both Dark Castle and Beyond Dark Castle, plus a whole lot of new material and lovely color graphics. And guess what? It's still available in Apple's App Store for only... No. No! So, I can't play Return to Dark Castle on any of my current devices. But all hope is not lost. Though the publisher seems to be dead and not updating anything, I have heard that the original developer, Zsculpt Entertainment, is working on porting the game to a Unity engine that could work on newer Macs and PC. But that might take a while. In the meantime, I can try getting a used older model Mac that still runs Mojave instead of Catalina or Big Sur. Would you like to help with that? I've just set up a new goal on my Ko-fi page. Check the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, please like, comment, or even subscribe. Share it with your Mac nerd friends. I really do appreciate all of you watching, and I hope you had fun with me today. Have a good one, everybody, and happy Halloween!